G'day, Neil here from Player One Sim Gear, and today we have a very early first look at the brand new Pimax Crystal. We got our hands on one of the first production units to arrive in Australia. We had it for about 24 hours now. I want to walk you through how the initial setup went, how the unboxing went, and what my early thoughts are, and a very quick early comparison against the HP Reverb G2 as well. Right, so how about the setup? Well, we had an initial challenge with the setup in that my PC wouldn't recognize that the display port from the crystal was actually plugged in. This may be a problem that some of you is bringing back memories from 4090, or sorry, 3090 days with some of the earlier Pimax units. The Essentially, the way it works is I've got three monitors set up on my PC. It's obviously a racing simulator. It's got three large monitors, all pretty high resolution, and I'm running a Gigabyte 3080 Ti with an i7 with 64 gig of RAM. I'll, I'll post all the detailed specs below. But what I found is that the PC, when the three monitors were active, it wasn't recognizing that the Pimax crystal was plugged in, which obviously meant I couldn't then set it up. So the download of the Pimax software was nice and easy. There were some links that, um, again, I'll post below. Pimax is still getting their head around the setup and some of the guide, you know, the documentation and the guidance around the setting up of the crystal. It's obviously very new. So you've got to make sure you get the right version of the Pimax software, get that in place, and then it, it all sort of went really smoothly once I got my PC to recognize it. And the way I did that was I just had to unplug one of the monitors. So for some reason, I was running two HDMI and one display port, and I've got two additional display ports. And for some reason, that when I plugged in the display port from the Crystal in with the other three monitors, it was no bueno. The computer would just fail to recognize that the Crystal was even plugged in. And the, the only way I could get it working is as I said, was simply to unplug one of the monitors. Didn't matter which one I unplugged, could be one of the HDMIs or one of the display ports, reboot the PC, start it up with the crystal plugged in, recognize it every time. So there's obviously something happening there in terms of the graphics card is not liking the combination of all the different resolutions perhaps or something. I spoke to Pimax about it, they're looking into it. Uh, they said they suspect that it's to do with the, the capacity of the GPU and the graphics card is for some reason shutting off the additional display port when it's got the three other large monitors on board. I don't know. I hope they fix it. It's a minor inconvenience. Certainly uh, having to unplug one of the monitors each time I want to run a VR session. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, it'd be rather, I'd rather not have to do that. So Let's go to once we got it up and running, how did we find it? Well, first of all, the setup was really easy. Configuring the software didn't take any time at all. Uh, the software's, I think, had a bit of a facelift for the crystal. It looks nice. Worked, it was very intuitive in terms of how I set it all up, and there were you know, certainly no problems getting it stood up. The next step was to install the Pimax OpenVR um, module so that I can run the, the open, sorry, open XR with Pimax. Uh, the tools, again, really easy to do. There was a nice simple guide from Pimax that I found, which I will link below, because what I wanted to do to, to start off with was get DCS running. It took me probably 10 minutes. I installed the Pimax um, OpenXR component, then my regular OpenXR just worked fine. I loaded up DCS and uh, was able to get up and running. Once I got the DisplayPort side of things fixed up, probably 15 to 20 minutes, and I was loading up a game of DCS. Shot. Yeah, good shot. All right, so what were my initial impressions once I ran DCS? Wow, is the only answer. The clarity on this thing has to be seen to be believed. So let's take a look at some gameplay footage. Now, apologies to all the professional VR YouTube reviewers out there. I am very new to capturing software. I'm used to doing hardware reviews. So this is essentially just an OBS screen grab of the display output that pops up on my monitor when I'm using DCS. I'm sure there's a much more effective way to capture VR footage than the way I'm doing it but hopefully this gives you an impression of some of that detail and clarity. And again, this is not optimized at all. So uh, I definitely need to tidy this up in terms of the, you know, dialing in the settings and the toolkit. Uh, this is running at about 30 odd frames per second, 35, I think. So again, it's probably a little jittery. It certainly looks a little more jittery on here than it did in the headset. And of course, the other thing that you're not really getting is the three dimensions. So it's impossible on YouTube to show the real value of VR. If you haven't used VR on DCS before, is that it's all about the three dimensions and feeling like you're in the cockpit and that sense of height and that sense of speed that you get and that sense of actually being up in the sky that only comes from having a VR headset on. 
But what you, what you do hopefully get is a little bit of sense of some of the clarity, and particularly in the definition of the trees and the buildings, you can see um, that does seem, seem to come through, I think, okay on this video. So please enjoy this, and uh, yeah, let me know. I'll try and capture a bunch more video, and for future videos, I will try and improve the quality of the screen grabs that I'm getting, that I'm getting as well. So I'm coming from the HP Reverb G2, as I've said, just a massive step up in terms of the clarity. This thing absolutely blew my mind right off the bat as to how clear it was. And something I really wasn't expecting was how much I was able to actually turn off different functions from OpenXR Toolkit. So some of the functions it just it, the crystal didn't like. So for example, turbo mode in the OpenXR, it was causing flickering, which it didn't like. Initially, I had some black borders on the sides of the screen when I turned my head, and I've noticed from one of the other uh, review videos that came out earlier that that was a function of the res resolution so out of the box the crystal is trying to pump out max resolution so I use the OpenXR toolkit to just override the resolution and turn it down I think I set it on about 2600 by 30 something something hundred and that made a huge difference so immediately after a reload the the black border on the edge of the screen was gone crystal clear in terms of no pun intended in terms of how smooth it was moving around the head tracking was great. And in fact, I was actually able to turn up some of the functionality or some of the features in DCS because if I turned off so many of the features from OpenXR. So I didn't need to turn off the auto scaling anymore or the upscaling, so the NIS and the CAS upscaling. It didn't, didn't need any of that, turned that straight off. And essentially I was able to put OpenXR back to a pretty standard um, you know, configuration with the exception, I guess, of some of the post-processing, which again, I just tweaked, you know, that's just look and feel, right? It's not really performance-based. So I just tweaked that to get to a nice color scheme that I liked because again, the vibrancy and the colors of the crystal was a noticeable improvement noticeable improvement over the G2. So initial impressions in performance wise coming from the HP Reverb G2 is the clarity is amazing. I actually gained FPS. I I'm happy anywhere from 35 to 50 FPS is where I'm used to. I know some, some of you would be you know wanting much higher, you're more comfortable at much higher levels. I'm used to in the 30s, so I'm getting a steady sort of 45 uh, frames per second in DCS now on the crystal, and I'm, it's really smooth and really consistent. I'm really happy with it. Uh, it looks amazing, like flying in, in Syria, looking down at the, the buildings and the level of detail on the trees, just staggering. I went back to the Reverb G2 to compare, and I couldn't believe actually how much I was used to those features, those distant features being sort of distinct and slightly fuzzy. The other thing that I solved completely was the shimmering. So I'd always had a little bit of an issue with shimmering textures on the HP Reverb G2, completely gone with the crystal. So again, I was able to crank up the anti-aliasing a little bit more as well with the crystal because it seemed to have so much additional power that I could use. Uh, so the shimmering's gone. Clarity is easily 20 to 30%, you know, as a guess improvement in the, in the clarity close up in the cockpit. I was able to see all of the display buttons down the sides of the cockpit really clearly. And then obviously the, the clarity of the ground textures is, uh, has to be seen to be, be believed. It's really impressive. So overall, really, really happy with that. I then went into Microsoft Flight Simulator, same thing there again, noticeable improvement in the clarity of the textures. Now these are just initial, I probably spent about an hour in each, uh, tweaking them and playing around, and overall just a massive step up in terms of clarity. Performance, no hit at all in terms of performance, and in fact, as I said, I actually think I gained frames um, from going from the HP Reverb to the Crystal, and that's on a 3080 Ti with a last gen i7 and 64 gig of RAM. So if you've got a 3080 rest assured you will be able to absolutely run the crystal without any problems whatsoever okay let's take a quick look at the software so you can see it's pretty functional the software it's well put together um, pretty simple and easy to use kind of self-explanatory once you get set up you'll be able to see how to sort of follow the steps in terms of the initial configuration of the device uh, you can set up the room and everything I haven't done the room setup and the with the, like the trackers and stuff yet I've just been using it sitting on the rig so far obviously one little pro tip, there is a control Q command that's not listed anywhere. It brings up kind of like a hidden menu. So you can see here when I hit control Q and pull in the menu that pops up on the outside, this gives you access to the local dimming feature and you can change how that's set. It also lets you choose the lenses that are in place. So you see here I've selected that it's got the plastic lenses. 
I don't know yet what the difference is in terms of the software functionality, like what it does to the actual headset when you switch between the glass and the plastic lenses in this software setting. I've reached out to Pimax and we'll ask that question and I'll update you when, I, when they hear back. Okay, let's take a look now at a direct comparison between the Crystal and the HP Reverb G2. The, the number one difference you notice is the size. Of course, the Crystal is absolutely a little bit wider, or about 20%, I guess, wider than the G2. It also looks a bit longer, just the way they're positioned here, because the G2 naturally sort of compresses in. It's got the stretchy, um, I guess, joins here, or brackets here, which go out depending on when it fits on your head, so it makes it look a little bit shorter as well. But ultimately... I didn't really notice the size so much. So a lot of people are saying, or I've heard online that it's a bit that the crystal comparatively feels a little cumbersome, a little weighty. Look, it's definitely heavier, but ultimately it was really comfortable for me. I didn't really notice the weight. And the key change for me was when I swapped the uh, gaskets. So this is the original gasket that comes with it. There's a comfort gasket, which you can see on there. It's a lot higher at the top there. And what that meant is that it sits the, the crystal a little bit higher up on your forehead, puts a little more of the load bearing, if you will, a little bit up on your forehead rather than lower on your cheeks. Whereas one thing about the what the reverb does very well is it spreads the load very evenly across your face. Now, again, that's going to vary depending on your face type. What I find is the, the reverb is a slightly narrower fit on the facial gasket, whereas the crystal is a little bit wider here. Um, so that means it doesn't feel quite as snug around the sides. That for me made it just, as I said, when I, when I was using this gasket, it didn't feel particularly comfortable because it felt a lot of the load was being borne across this top part here, and not much around the sides. When I moved to the comfort gasket that I said, again, came with it, it moved more of that load up wider onto the top sort of part of my forehead. There's still not a huge amount around the side. And what I might actually do is look to just pad the sides out with a little more foam just to bring the fit more evenly all the way around sort of the edges of the gasket. And you can see there's, there's indents in the gaskets, both the comfort gasket and the stock one for glasses. So I don't use glasses. So what I might do is look to close that seal up there a little bit, which will make it a more even fit all the way around. The reverb, as you can see, while fine for glasses, of course, it doesn't have that glasses indent around the side and it ultimately provides a more even fit all the way around the gasket, which added to a little bit more of the comfort factor. So out of the box, the reverb was definitely more comfortable, I think, than the crystal, but ultimately um, it wasn't really a factor of the weight. It was just a factor for me of the fit of the gasket, which is something that I'm, you know, will be different for everybody. And it's certainly something I know there'll be third party gaskets and that which come out. So people will be able to play around with the different fits to make sure that you get it right. And of course, the crystal comes with two of them. For the rest of it, the other components, again, the weight wasn't a major factor. They both sort of load bear across the top in the same way. Uh, this one, of course, the crystal has a, an adjustable sort of switch at the back there to provide that compression and bring the the in, sort of the um, the back strap into your head. So again, that's really easy to adjust on the fly. It's no problem at all. The difference with the reverb is that it has a stretchy one rather than a than an adjustable one. So ultimately, and in fact, they actually made the crystal a little bit easier to get on and off. You just have to loosen it off when you take it off, give it a couple of quick twists on the back when you put it on to get it to the right level of comfort. Okay, so looking at the main components that come with the unit, you've got the fiber optic cable, which came with mine. I know some people are getting the DP cable. I think uh, they're shipping all of the early ones are going, going out with the fiber optic cable at the moment. The only difference I can tell between the two cables in terms of functionality is that this cable just has has one USB 3 and one DP port on the, on the end, and of course the, the DP port which goes into the headset itself, whereas the other DP cable has two USBs. That seems to be the difference. Uh, ultimately, you know, the... From all other intents and purposes, it's a great cable. It's well put together. It's, I think, six meters long. It's certainly very long. It's nice and lightweight. Fits really snugly or really tightly, in fact, into the jack on the top here of the crystal. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to have any concerns, I don't think, with the cable. The second battery is here, and it's in the charger. Okay, now this is a point that you're going to see mentioned a little bit, I think. Sorry, I'll just move the, uh, the two controllers out of the way there. One of the things you're going to see is about this part here. These are the brackets that hold the, the batteries into, in this case, the charger. And the mount for this is pretty similar on the back of the unit itself, whether the other battery goes in. These things are pretty tricky. So getting the getting these clips to disengage can, is actually quite hard work. So you see here, the way I've sort of worked out to do it is you push one in and you slightly disengage one side. 
and you come over to the other side and you push that in and you pop it out the other and then out it comes. So you see that's the charger itself there, USB-C port on top there for charging it and then there's the battery. Now the same is true when you, when you try and take the battery out of the crystal itself. So if we flip this over, you can see there's the port in there and there's the two little clips one there and one there. And getting it out is not as easy as you think. You can't just like grab it and click it. Now again, I'm sure that'll loosen off over time, but at the moment, it's a little bit tricky. So you sort of, you press one in to loosen it off and then you reach over the other side. See how it works, press the other one in, there you go, a little click and out it comes. So it's not hard by any means, but it is absolutely not something you'd I'd think you'd really comfortably do reaching around the back of your head to start with. Although of course, like I said, they will loosen off. And the fit in, one thing I will say though, it's a really snug fit in there. You're not, there's no mistaking once it clicks in. So again, you just sort of put it into place here. But also to click it, you have to again, give it a little bit of side pressure. One click in, and on this one, one click in. There you go, so now it's in place. Again, not, it doesn't just slot in and click in. I think they can improve those click mechanisms definitely in future iterations. Seems like a pretty simple thing for them to adjust to make it a little more user friendly. Oh, sorry, while I'm here, let me also show you how the second gasket fits on. So the gasket here, you can see it's just a Velcro attachment. You can see, just fits on like that. Nice and easy, really easy to apply. Sticks on, really solid fit. There's two little plastic, I guess, nose protections or flanges, whatever you want to call them there. And they obviously stop the light from bleeding in around the nose. Again, they're fine, really comfortable. You could trim them if you really wanted to, to get them to fit your face perfectly. But ultimately, um, they're great out of the box. There was no problems with that. Okay, so in terms of overall build of the unit itself, look, it just it feels really well built. It's not that heavy. Um, there's, there's not a really a noticeable weight difference between the Reverb G2 and this. Just really good quality construction. It feels solid. It feels robust. Uh, the As I mentioned, so I've swapped to the Comfort Face Shield. Um, what I would probably change is I might fill in just the sides a little bit here comparative to the HP G2. And again, I'll touch on that in a little more detail. But I think uh, the as third-party gaskets come out as well, it'll be really interesting to see how they fit. Uh, in terms of the... I'll put that down there. In terms of battery life, so the, when it, out of the box it had about 20% battery on each of them. They came with obviously a minimal factory charge. I still got like an hour, or hour and a half out of that just using the you know the basic factory charge, which is really encouraging. I'll do some proper testing to to let you know like what the the longer term battery life is on flight and race sessions at a later date. But early initial thoughts are it looks really good. The, the other thing you can do as well, so I should mention also there was a firmware update. So as soon as I, once I got it all set up and working, there was a firmware update to do. To do that, you just plug into the USB-C port here on the side and the firmware update took about 15 minutes, not that, sorry, five minutes. Downloaded it and it updated perfectly fine, no dramas. You can also apparently, and I'll get you some more detail on this, I've reached out to Pimax to ask them for specifics. You can apparently use this, this is a fully functioning USB-C charge port as well. So allegedly you can use this as a charging point using a fast charger for the battery when it's mounted in the back of the headset here. I'll give you some more data points on that. We'll find out what they recommend and if that's doable. I know some people are thinking, well, can they run a six meter USB-C cable in conjunction with your existing, the, the display port cable, which slots into here and then essentially get more charge on the go while it's running. Maybe I'll let you know whether that's a thing or not. Um, and also whether you can just plug the headset in here overnight and whether it'll charge. The other question is how much charge is this thing going to take from the USB 3.0 cable if it's left in overnight and like me, your USB ports stay powered overnight. Uh, when, uh, overnight, I mean like when the computer's turned off or in standby. Can, is it still going to be taking charge to the headset? So ideally every morning you get up and you have hopefully a full battery on the headset itself, which would be nice. All right, so final thoughts. Sorry, this has been a very rapid video. I know I am, as I said, I'm not a VR guy. So this perhaps isn't the most detailed of all the VR videos out there. There's lots of great ones to choose from. What I want to give you is our initial thoughts, having used this now, having set it up, having unboxed it, having set it up on two of the main console or title, sorry, that we'll be, that we'll be running with it on. Just really impressive. Like it's a step up from the HP Reverb G2. It is huge. The Pimax Crystal, you can't understate the impact of the clarity. The visual quality is amazing. Straight out of the box, it worked great. Took minimal setup. The DMAS headphones that came with these early order units as well, they're great. And there's lots of positive reviews about them. Worked really well. It was comparable to the great headphones that are on the Reverb for me. 
Overall, really happy. This will absolutely be my go-to headset from now on. Uh, I'm going to be using it mostly for DCS. I'm going to be using it a lot for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to jump into the racing titles for you as well. Check out iRacing and Assetto. I'll let you know how it goes on those. But yeah, really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing the different updates come through. Obviously, there's some new features that are going to be released. Um, the fixed foveated rendering is going to be coming out in by the end of June, allegedly, or you know, apparently. We'll see if it does. Uh, overall, though, yeah, just really happy with the unit and can't wait to dive in and do a little more testing and get you some more video content. So please do do the like and subscribe thing on the video. Stay tuned. We'll bring you more details. And more than that, let me know what you want to see. So ask questions, please, in the chat below, in the comments section. Let me know what you'd like me to check on. If you, let me know if there's any specific things you'd like to know. Happy to help. I'll post a bunch of links in the description as well. All of the documentation that I have from Pimax on the setup. Some of the information about the posts around the uh, when they're shipping out the glass lenses. Stay tuned. I'll bring you a bunch more information over the coming weeks. Thanks very much. Again, I'm Neil from Player One Sim Gear, and I will see you again soon. Cheers.